speak for 15 minutes. And then uh, my colleague Reza here is going to come up and walk through some of uh, the basic development techniques for Windows Phone. Um, that's more of what Reza does every single day. So you may have been aware that Microsoft had a product before Windows Phone, um, that we had a, a Windows Mobile product. Um, you may have heard of that. It, it had been around for some time. and. Um, you know, uh, it, it was an interesting product for its time, and, but, but the, res the, the realization had hit somewhere around 2007, around June 2007 exactly, um, that um, maybe we had to rethink the way we were doing the product. And so um, the first thing that happened, I mean, you know, we sat down and we said, what the heck do we need to do here? And, and basically, you know, the realization was, and I know this sounds like not rocket science, but the phone is not a PC. Uh, and that fundamentally, you really have to approach it as a different thing altogether from an end user perspective, from a user experience perspective. And, and so, you know, when it came to framing what the tenets of this new phone product was going to be, uh, the, it, everything had to serve driving an outstanding end user experience. That was really the primary, primary goal driving the prime directive, if you will, around the whole product. Secondly, uh, hardware here. Um, we wanted to enable uh, third-party OEMs to innovate, but we didn't want it to come at the cost of a stable and standard application platform because um, we do recognize, we had this problem with Windows Mobile, there were millions of different types of devices out there with thousands of different types of hardware and what it meant that if you wrote an application for a Windows Phone or Windows Mobile device, you weren't guaranteed it was going to work on uh, every Windows mobile device because the hardware varied so wildly. So we knew we needed to have a, a model that imposed standards of some kind. The third item was platform here because if you want an outstanding uh, product, I mean you absolutely, uh, an outstand a part of, a key part of an outstanding end user experience on a phone is thousands of apps and games with which to customize the device. Uh, and Microsoft is no stranger to development platform. Um, we, we've been focusing on development platform for 35 years. It's really been a core focus of the company. Uh, and, um, you know, we wanted to take all that knowledge and history and assets and, and, you know, the products that we had, Visual Studio, .NET Framework, we wanted to bring that and leverage all of that to create an outstanding platform that would jumpstart a new ecosystem. So this is just a little bit of a, about what was some of the design inspiration here. And we've shown this slide so much, I, you guys probably have seen it. it you know, basically, international transportation signage was part of the underlying design inspiration of this product because it's instantly recognizable, it's clean, it's focused on the content itself, not the Chrome. Uh, and uh, it, you know, it has a global presence. And, and, and so we wanted to create a product that echoed these themes and, and permutated these themes. And, and, and so this is what we came up with, which is uh, what we call the Metro design system for Windows Phone. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you this on the phone, actually, because I don't want to waste too much time on, you know, I, t I mentioned hardware, consistent hardware specs. Um, you can find all of this online, so I'm not going to waste time on the slides. So I've got, a, I've got a Windows phone here running. There we go. So the first thing you'll notice here, and, and so this is a little program that's uh, streaming the video directly out uh, of the phone. Um, you'll notice here the first thing. We're showing, we're showing some information on the lock screen. Uh, we're showing information that's relevant to you on the lock screen. Uh, the, the idea, as I said, you know, we talked about outstanding and user experiences. What were some of these things? How did this manifest itself? Well. One of the things that we wanted to, one of the guiding principles in that, in that, in that area was being, getting people access to the information they care about as quickly as possible. So you obviously, you care if you have an appointment coming up. And so we show appointments, we show missed emails, we show, uh, and this is not anything, you know, rocket science, but it does demonstrate some of the key principles behind the user experience. Um, you know, and we can enforce a PIN for, based on your email server. And this is our home screen, the start tiles, the live tiles. This is completely user customizable. Um, the user can remove anything. No operator or OEM can put anything here permanently. Uh, you know, per our guidance, you know, the user has to have complete control of the system. And uh, you know, they can change the color, the accent color here. They can move the tiles around. 
And they can pick different applications to put here as well. So, um, and these are not just static buttons. Obviously, you see there's, there's things changing here and moving around. Uh, and I, I've got a traffic status there. Uh, this is a, these are live tiles. Um, they update dynamically. Third-party application developers can leverage this with our push notification service to create an experience that updates dynamically on screen. So I've got weather dynamically updating here. I've got traffic status. Uh, and then some of the native experiences, I've got an email message sitting there. And I, I won't go through my email right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, and here's a Twitter client showing me a number of tweets that I haven't read yet. Obviously, there's a lot of tweets out there. And you'll notice the third-party applications actually leverage some of this look and feel as well. We make it very easy in Visual Studio. We have templates, and I'm beginning to sound a little bit like a salesman here, so I'll tone it down. But, but the, the third-party templates actually make it very easy to create applications that leverage these, these paradigms, this, this panorama control that we're looking at here. Um, the panorama basically is sort of a compelling manner to, to look at all of the animation, everything you get for free. You just you drag and drop this control, or you create a new panorama control project. And uh, Reza can show you this when he gets to that. But the other paradigm is, I mean, let, let me show you the people hub first, though, because this is actually where some of our principles come together uh, as quickly. It's a little hard to do this with one hand. So uh, the people hub here is where all of your people are aggregated, not just from your email services, but from social networking services as well. Uh, contacts will be automatically aggregated together depending on, uh, and I can jump to anywhere in the list right away like that, and I can look at a contact. And if I look at a contact, you'll see uh, this contact, the information is coming from Windows Live, Outlook, and Facebook, all three being aggregated in one place. Uh, I can also see social networking activity for this person right here. And so it'll go up and get uh, social networking activity from Facebook, from Windows Live. And uh, I think my network connectivity is a little bit poor in here. Can you add any network feed by the link? So right now, initially, we're supporting Facebook and Windows Live for social networking in the People Hub itself. But a lot of third parties are writing applications that support many other networking, uh, social networking services as well. Uh, and, and it is a goal of ours to provide extensibility like that. Um, as you can kind of tell by this model, what we're trying to do is provide people access to relevant, connected types of information and experiences without making them go to a separate application. So, uh, and, and then, you know, recents are listed here. Social networking activity is listed right here, uh, aggregated across all of the contacts. And you can go right in and see what people are saying uh, about this person's comment. And you can put a comment on it yourself right here. So a lot of the very basic things that people want to do immediately are taken care of there. Now, another thing that I want to show, and I'm checking the time here. I think I'm only five minutes in. OK, so if I go to... Um, a contact I know has an address, you know, it, it is very possible that uh, you may want to find out where that address is if you're looking at a contact. So, you know, we activate that link and it automatically will take me to the mapping application and uh, bring up, now I haven't launched maps since I started. You see, we ask people if you want to allow the phone to track your location. Uh, you'll notice that's a very, people like to be asked. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and you'll see here the Maps application came up. This is our standard Bing Maps application, leveraging the Bing service. Microsoft has a lot of these service products, and, and so we've tried to leverage all of that in creating a great phone. And, uh, you know, the, the thing that's nice here is that without doing anything else, I can actually go and say, you know, I want, I want directions to this place from my location, and click go, and of course I'm in San Francisco right now, so. Uh, this is a very long trip. You'll see here it's going to take me 11 hours by car. Uh, and uh, these are all the step by turn by turn directions here. So, uh, and I can click in the map if I want to see the map and zoom down. And you'll see the, the scope of the trip I am about to take. Um, but uh, anyway, I mean, I, I hope I'm getting across to you. I mean, this is the sort of thing that we focused on in this product. It's like creating, making it as easy as possible to execute these very basic things that, that we thought people wanted to do. And we did a lot of usability work. I mean, these are, these are things we think people want to do. Uh, another interesting experience here is the calendar. 
Uh, here we aggregate calendar services from a number of different providers and we're adding more in the next release. Um, but one of the really interesting, and this is actually kind of nice from a stylistic perspective, you know, I've got this day view here where I can see when time is free um, and I can go through the days and I can look at my next days. And, and since this is based on Exchange Server, um, you know, I can actually go in here and I can see who the attendees are in a meeting. And uh, I can actually reply to this meeting right here. I can accept, tentative, edit, uh, and I can also say late, um, which is something we use at Microsoft quite a lot uh, to say I'm going to be late to a meeting and it'll automatically uh, put together an email here saying I'll be a bit late. So that's very useful at Microsoft. We have a problem with being late. Uh, but then, uh, you know, here I can zoom out and look at my month view. And, you know, I, I'm getting kind of older, so I can't, I don't think that, that text is really that readable. But I don't think that's the point really because uh, it does give you some kind of idea about basically how busy you are on any given day and I can quickly jump through the months here and go, what am I doing on that day? And So it's a pretty cool user experience. I think our user experience team did a really excellent job on things like that. Last thing I'm going to show here, I mean there's a lot of stuff here obviously, Xbox Live integration uh, and um, the third party apps are fantastic too. And Internet Explorer, we just announced that we're going to have Internet Explorer 9 and our release coming out later this year, which we've been calling Mango. Um, you may have seen that. Uh, this is actually uh, being built exactly by the IE9 team. So they actually have the same code tree. They're generating IE9 for both. That's how, how close. If, if you want to get an idea about how uh, IE9 on the phone is going to work, uh, it's going to be virtually identical to IE9 on the desktop, except where it doesn't make sense, with some extra things. For example, it's going to be able to get location information. Um, let me just show you pictures really quick, because uh, here I get to show off my 20-month-old daughter. So here we got some interesting pivots. And the idea behind this pivot control is that it's, it's actually a unique paradigm for showing you c filtered cuts of data. I mean, there's nothing really new about the type of control. It's essentially the evolution of a tab control. But, but what's really cool about it is it kind of gives you this cool, interactive way of looking at uh, data in different different ways. So here I'm looking at it by date. Uh, and if I had a lot of pictures here, I could click on a date and go right to that month. Um, but then, you know, I can bring up... She's really cute. So, and, and you know, we support all the same things that... Oops. I hit the search button. You know, you can actually zoom in here and get this little film strip view. So anyway, I, you know, I, I suspect some of you didn't, haven't, hadn't seen the phone before and I just, you know, I know Microsoft comes across as being corporate and dull and blah and ugly. Um, I mean, we're aware of this, I mean, you know, but, but, but this is the thing, I mean, with this phone, we try to really start over and do something, what's that? Show Xbox? Okay. <laughs> I'll just do whatever you tell me now. I'm just like, <laughs> so this is Xbox Live support here in the phone. And um, right now, this is what it looks like today. Um, you, we have, there's over 65 Xbox Live titles currently. Um, and we support Avatar, uh, Gamer Score, uh, Leaderboards. So, you know, I can get, I can get uh, achievements here in Hexic and, and this will add to my overall uh, Gamer Score. Um, which is very important. I can come in here and, you know, so it's, this is all managed code too. People say managed code is non-performant, um, but um, we have, since we know the hardware spec here, uh, we're able to create some, and this is not, you know, it's not a first person shooter or anything, but it's, a, it's an interesting interactive little game. Um, obviously we have Bejeweled too as well. We're working with all the game publishers to get as many as we can. I think, like I said, there's 65 uh, Xbox Live titles. We have over 14,000 applications right now. Over uh, 40,000 developers have registered um, to submit applications. So, uh, and that's, and we've only had the phone out since um, September, I think. So, so uh, you know, we're really excited about the um, amount of um, reception we had. And uh, furthermore, I, you know, I think. We, we announced this deal with Nokia where we're going to become their primary smartphone operating system. So 
Uh, I, I know Nokia doesn't have a lot of presence in the United States, but uh, if you've been outside of the United States at all, you'll notice that um, virtually everybody has a Nokia phone, um, which is it's kind of shocking sometimes how many, I mean, is it, everybody has a Nokia phone. Um, so anyway, um, that's the phone. And I, I didn't really go through my slides. I mean, one of the things I did want to mention, and I'm almost out of time here, um, is, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I talked about the goals of the user experience. You know, the goals of our application platform were around enabling these user experiences. So, you know, you need thousands of compelling apps and games. So we wanted a platform that drove that, and we wanted to drive developer profit as well. And so we have a marketplace program. We do require certification, unlike Android. Um, but we do feel that end users need to have a guarantee of a certain level of quality. Uh, so we're trying to be very, very open and transparent with developers about exactly what those requirements are. Uh, we're sending very detailed reports to people when they don't pass certification. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things we're trying to do there. Like I said, I mean, from a, de from a uh, developer ecosystem perspective, we have a lot of history of, of working with developers. So it's something that we're very strong at. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about what the platform entails. We kind of, Reza is going to show you instead of talk about it. We have very powerful tools, which we'll talk about. Um, I mentioned this a little bit. These are just numbers. This is boring marketing stuff. Um, but the platform is evolving. At Mix, two weeks ago in Las Vegas, a conference Microsoft holds, we announced Windows Phone Mango, the application platform for the next version. This is coming out at the end of the year, by the end of the year. Uh, the application platform tools are going to be available in a couple weeks, by the end of May. So uh, you'll be able to download for free uh, Visual Studio Express 2010 for Windows Phone Mango. Uh, and it will come with a copy of Expression Blend as well, which is, our, is a very powerful, unique tool uh, that we have that enables you to build interactive experiences. And it'll do, like if you need to do some complex animation, it's really neat. You just set keyframes and you show where you want components of the screen to be at those steps and it will build all the animation automatically and you can even do easing functions and so forth. So uh, it makes it massively easier to build animated experiences. Uh, much easier than almost anyone else. I, I haven't seen a tool like it on other platforms. There probably are, but I'm focused on ours. But anyway, in Mango, we're, we're actually moving forward because we know that our first release was missing some things in terms of the platform. So, and we're adding multitasking. This is one of the main things people were asking for. Let us, we have multitasking in the operating system, obviously. We do not enable third-party applications to continue to run in the background today. But we are going to in our next release. And so this is what this is about. Um, you know, these are sort of the four different primary mechanisms we're going to provide for that. A lot more information about this is going to be online, so I'm not going to spend too much time. Uh, some of the new capabilities, one thing that's really interesting here, I'll mention briefly, access to the raw video stream is going to enable uh, building uh, augmented reality type applications on Windows Phone. Very, very easy to do so as well. Uh, and uh, support for gyroscope. We're going to have a spatial framework. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, going to enable you to leverage data from accelerometer, GPS, and compass, uh, and gyro uh, with one API set. And it's going to make it. Much, it's going to take a lot of the complex math out of leveraging the accelerometer data. Uh, socket support, something people want. SQL CE on the device, uh, and um, some new controls. Focus on performance, making it easier to write high-performing applications. Um, does anyone have any questions before I go? Because I'm just about to get out of here. So we have a program. Um, it's through our, uh, our site, create.msdn.com. is the site where all of this lives, by the way. Uh, and on that site, we have a program you register for. You pay a $99 fee a year. If you're a student, you can get this for free, I believe. Uh, and uh, once you've done that, you can unlock a commercial phone for development purposes so you can test against it. And you can submit applications for publication. And when you submit an app, uh, then it goes through the certification process, uh, whereby we test it for certain characteristics and performance quality. 
uh, and um, a number of different criteria. Um, we've got a pretty easy to read document about it on, online now. We're in the process, actually tomorrow, we're gonna have much clearer documentation. We're continually working on making this as clear as possible. And if you fail certification, I mean, the first thing that happens when you register to be a developer is we have to validate your identity because we're gonna be signing your apps with a certificate when we distribute it. So there's this validation process and then once you pass through that, then you can submit apps. Uh, and we certify them. And I think our turnaround time is about two days now on certifying applications. So it's not, that's the average time right now. And like I said, we've got over 14,000 apps we've published so far, uh, and many, many more uh, waiting. So, and maybe one more question. The question, yes? Just curious, what's the user base for the phone right now? The user base. So we, uh, we're a brand new platform. And uh, we, we've officially stated that we have uh, we provided OEMs uh, two million licenses to Windows Phone at this point. So the OEMs then that, that's, that's our that's our that's our sell in numbers. We're not that's the only numbers we're talking about this time. We are a new platform, and we understand that sockets are very important for developers when determining you know, where I'm gonna, how many people can buy my app, why would I adopt a platform if not people, uh, people can. Uh, but um, we think the opportunity is huge. Uh, based, on our, uh, based on the numbers, uh, based on our agreement with Nokia, uh, and uh, IDC and Gartner uh, just came out with new studies showing that they think, we're, and, and this is extremely aggressive, they think we're going to be in a number two position by 2015. So there's been some independent research in that area that's, and a lot of that's based on our relationship with Nokia. Uh, but uh, Nokia is a very, very big deal. Okay, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Reza now. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>